You've seen this image. You know what happens in this comic. It's the limited series Batman – The Long Halloween, published between 1986 and 1997, a time of transition for the Batman franchise thanks to a large number of mediocre comic storylines and also the release of a movie that caused many reactions, including confusion, frustration, but most importantly… <coughs> and then there's this. A story so unlike any of its contemporaries, so different and unique that almost three decades later it still remains among the definitive Batman stories of all time. But before diving into the story itself, we need to understand how exactly such a landmark in the history of the Batman comics came to be, and how the success of this story owes much to the ingenious creativity of talented creators, as it does to the shameful appropriation of others' ideas. It's a well-known and highly praised story, with the secret of its success hidden in plain sight and with a legacy that molded the future of the Batman franchise on every single level. Halloween is a very special time, where for one night only, it's okay to let loose of your fears and watch as people dress up as monsters to terrorize the innocent. It's a holiday that comes only once every year, but in 1996, Halloween lasted for a whole year in Gotham. Writer Jeff Loeb and artist Tim Sale were the creative team in charge of The Long Halloween, and a large part of the success of the story is thanks to their combined work. But the origin story of The Long Halloween starts with another person, and that is editor Archie Goodwin. Our story begins in the late 1989, when the Batman comics experienced a renaissance over the astronomical success of the 1989 Batman movie. The popularity of Batman rose to the point DC felt confident creating the first new solo Batman comic book in over 50 years. It was Legends of the Dark Knight, a series that consisted almost entirely on self-contained stories, set in the early days of Batman's career with no other heroes active in Gotham and James Gordon still holding the rank of captain. The series features some of the most successful stories in the early issues, including Shaman, Gothic and Venom. A wide variety of creative teams contributed to the Legends of the Dark Knight series, but in 1991, the original editors of the series were changed and Archie Goodwin became the new editor. Archie Goodwin was a comic book legend and one of the most respected creators among his peers. Upon taking control of Legends of the Dark Knight, Goodwin started to make some changes in order to make the series stand out among the rest of the Batman comics. In 1992, Archie Goodwin hired artist Tim Sale and paired him with writer James Robinson in the three-part story called Blades, which reintroduced a forgotten Batman villain called the Cavalier. This was the first big Batman work by artist Tim Sale, who would later go on to work work on Shadow of the Bat, another new Batman title. In the meantime, Archie Goodwin continued making changes to the Legends of the Dark Knight series, and he decided to create special holiday publications, but instead of going for the traditional Christmas specials, Archie Goodwin chose another holiday, one that would be more suitable for Batman. Once again, Goodwin hired Tim Sale, but this time he paired him with writer Jeff Loeb, a completely new writer to the Batman comics and someone who had only worked once before with Sale in the obscure 1981 Challengers of the Unknown series. Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale were not precisely the best-known Batman creative team, but Archie Goodwin saw something in them, and in October of 1983, they published the first Legends of the Dark Knight Halloween special. The combination of Loeb's dark themes and Sale's atmospheric art created one of the most successful first efforts that any Batman creative team had ever achieved. Archie Goodwin's gamble had paid off, which is why he repeated the formula the next couple of years. Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale collaborated again in 1984 and 1995, creating the second and third Halloween specials and cementing their legacy as one of the most interesting Batman creative teams. But after the third Halloween special, Loeb and Sale wanted to move on, thinking that they had told all the stories they wanted to tell. But Archie Goodwin disagreed. 
Of the three Halloween specials that they had done together, the first one was the one that left a bigger impression on Archie Goodwin, especially a couple of pages early on in the story, where Batman fights a group of gangsters. In 1996, Archie Goodwin approached Jeff Loeb with an idea for another story, one that would explore the organized crime of Gotham, and he even suggested the possibility of using the characters and situations presented in the iconic Batman, Year One. By 1996, 10 years had passed since the definitive origin story of Batman was published in Batman Year One, and Archie Goodwin thought it was time to have a proper continuation to that story. In Year One, Batman is just starting out as a vigilante in Gotham, finding that his mission is too large for any simple human to accomplish, and that in order to stand up against the corrupted system and the powerful criminals, he needs to become larger than life and find strategic allies that will help him achieve his goals. Ladies, gentlemen, you've eaten well. You've eaten Gotham's wealth, its spirit. But your feast is nearly over. From this moment on, none of you are safe. And in the sequel, Batman is almost killed by a freaking old man. A very very old motherfucker. To say that Batman Year Two is a disappointment would be a compliment, so naturally Jeff Loeb took the opportunity to create a proper sequel to Batman Year One. After getting permission to use his characters and his creations from Frank Miller himself, Jeff Loeb started working on the next Legends of the Dark Knight Halloween special, only this time it was going to be different. After consulting with other fellow comic book creators, Loeb decided that the story should be told in 13 chapters across an entire year of publications, and that it should be focused on Harvey Dent. He brought this idea back to Arch Goodwin, who was fascinated by the idea, but most importantly, it was Arch Goodwin who gave the project its final title. He called it Batman – The Long Halloween. P please subscribe. Thank you. The Long Halloween is often considered to be a masterpiece, and we all know that the best way to create a masterpiece is to rip off the 1972 gangster movie The Godfather, bit by bit. I believe in America. Part of the reason why the gangsters of Gotham in The Long Halloween feel so real and fleshed out is because they are almost a carbon copy of the characters of The Godfather, arguably the best gangster movie of all time. Another one of the great things about The Godfather, I mean uh, The Long Halloween, is that each issue is connected to the same holiday as the month in which each chapter was published. Back then, this was a huge deal, as the story remained relevant for the whole year, and what's even better is how they connected the holidays of each month with the murder mystery, introducing the mysterious holiday killer as the villain that drives the story forward. And speaking of holiday, another stroke of genius was using real-life historic events to model the pattern of the serial killer. The Valentine's Day Massacre is a real event, where seven gangsters were gunned down by members of a rival mob for control of the city. It happened in Chicago on Valentine's Day of 1929, and it's obviously the inspiration for the holiday killer in The Long Halloween, where the killings happen on specific holidays, including Valentine's Day. As soon as the story was published, The Long Halloween became the official sequel to Batman, Year One. But The Long Halloween did something better. Although both stories chronicle the events surrounding Batman's activities in a time period of a year, the publication of Year One happened in just four months in the main Batman comics. Compared to that, The Long Halloween actually lasted for an entire year of publications, taking the Year Two title in a literal sense. Year One is also quite a literal title, as it simply refers to the first year of Batman's activities. The Long Halloween, on the other hand, is both a literal and metaphorical title, as it not only follows the serial killer that terrorized Gotham from one Halloween to the next, but this is also a story about how Gotham City was plunged into an eternal, long Halloween, one where people dress up as monsters and terrorize the innocent every night of every year for the rest of eternity. At the very center of the story, The Long Halloween is really about the downfall of the organized crime of Gotham, and the dawn of a new era of costumed freaks and lunatics spreading their own brand of terror, a change that is caused as a result of Batman's presence. 
The story starts out by showing us how the underworld of the city is literally split in half. The crime families of Gotham are all safe in their ivory towers, untouched by justice, while just below the surface and hidden from everyone's view, a new brand of criminals is brewing. This is perfectly illustrated in the second issue, when Batman chases one of Falcone's men down to the sewers. The moment Batman steps into the dark world beneath the city, it's as if he crosses a portal, a threshold into the madness that lies hidden underneath Gotham. A madness represented by the inhuman creature that is Solomon Grundy, and this is the story's way to introduce us to the outcasts that will eventually take control of the city. But to understand exactly how the criminal powers in Gotham changed, we have to take a look at the fall of the Roman Empire. Uh, the other Roman Empire. There you go. The Long Halloween showcases the fall of Carmine the Roman Falcone. From the very first chapter, he is described as the untouchable crime lord of Gotham. And that was true, until the holiday killer showed up and the criminal empire of the Roman started to flounder. With each passing issue, the ranks of the Falcone crime family are diminished, and his army starts to thin, while the number of costume criminals in the city keeps growing. As the organized crime of Gotham starts falling apart, Falcone is forced to make business and deals with the freaks, the outcasts, not realizing that ever since Batman showed up, things had changed. Watching the slow undoing of the crime families of Gotham that ends with Falcone completely powerless makes his description as the untouchable crime lord of Gotham by the final issue pure irony. The genius of the long Halloween is how it manages to balance the story of Falcone's downfall while also presenting the definitive origin story of Two-Face. We watch how Falcone loses his grip over the city just as Harvey Dent is consumed by his dark desire to get rid of the crime families. In his obsession to fight the Mafia, Harvey Dent makes an alliance with Batman and Captain Gordon. And if you're wondering why the art is different in this segment, well that's because half of Two-Face's origin was actually taken from the Batman Annual number 14, which was published six years before the long Halloween. Bruh. The alliance between Batman, Gordon and Dent could have actually worked, but unfortunately Harvey Dent was not into threesomes, and when the holiday killer showed up, the story starts to present Dent as the primary suspect, which was nothing short of brilliant. The treatment that Harvey Dent gets in the story is very Hitchcockian, throwing suspicion over someone that is actually innocent, or is he? While also delivering subtle hints about his double identity, foreshadowing his dark future. It's a really effective way to convey the dark downfall of Harvey Dent, while also throwing a red herring about the story's murder mystery. Of course, we all know that Dent will become Two-Face when he gets acid thrown to his face. This becomes the turning point in Gotham, when a man who represents law and order becomes a symbol of madness, and it doesn't get any more symbolic than Two-Face being born on the birthday of Carmine Falcone. Then, when Harvey escapes from the hospital and goes down into the sewers, it becomes a symbol of him crossing the threshold into the dark underworld of Gotham. His interaction and understanding of Solomon Grundy represents the idea that he now belongs with the freaks. Harvey Dent was the last piece of the puzzle before the madness below the surface exploded, and in the most symbolic moment of the story, Two-Face releases the most dangerous lunatics of Arkham Asylum, and they take possession of Falcone's office, where Two-Face kills the Roman and officially marks the end of the crime families of Gotham. The crime in Gotham City is no longer literally divided in half. The irony is that the person who changed that is. The genius of the long Halloween is also present in the way the story presents each of the villains, all of whom have big splash pages showing in a very graphical way just how important and big they are. All of them except for the Riddler, who is actually treated like a joke here. Solomon Grundy was not really considered a Batman villain until this story. The Joker here acts more like the Grinch. The Scarecrow is based on an old Disney character and Arkham Asylum gets their own Hannibal Lecter in the new version of the Calendar Man. The Mad Hatter, the Penguin and Poison Ivy all join Two-Face in taking over the Roman's empire, but the most mysterious one of them all is Catwoman. The Long Halloween is a story that draws a lot of inspiration from film noir. 
from the shadowy visuals to the crime-driven plot, but perhaps the most noir element of the story is Catwoman, a character that represents the femme fatale. Selina is the enticing female with uncertain goals and motives that nobody really understands. They don't even bother to explain how come Selina Kyle is in her civilian identity at the Falcone's party. Like, what's her connection with Carmine Falcone? How did she even meet Bruce Wayne? Why does she wear jewelry while in costume? Catwoman might just be the story's biggest mystery, even more so than Holiday. And speaking of Holiday, it would be pointless for me to try to explain the truth about Holiday. The ending of the story and the reveal of the identity of Holiday is intentionally misleading and left to interpretation, so whatever version you like to believe about it could be most likely right. Or maybe not. The great thing about this ending is that it doesn't give us clear answers, and that is part of the appeal of the story. A murder mystery to the very end and beyond. The legacy of the long Halloween was felt as soon as the story was finished. At long last, Batman had two solid early stories in his career. Batman Year One as his definitive origin story, and The Long Halloween as the definitive sequel and origin story of Two-Face. Both stories together were so iconic that years later they became the basis for the new cinematic Batman franchise, with Year One becoming the template for Batman Begins and The Long Halloween being the blueprint for The Dark Knight. The influence of The Long Halloween is still felt to this day, from countless Batman comics, the Arkham video games, as well as the most recent Batman cinematic franchise, all of them proving just how influential the story actually is. The success of The Long Halloween launched two sequels called Batman, Dark Victory and Catwoman, When in Rome, two stories that continue to expand the mythology of the Batman mythos, which is precisely the reason why this is a perfect Batman story. The Long Halloween is not only a good and interestingly written murder mystery, it also feels like a Batman tale. The majority of the story happens in places that perfectly capture the atmosphere of Gotham. Dark rooms with barely any source of light, tall rooftops that contrast with deep sewers, jail cells and prisons that look more like dark dungeons from centuries ago, massive graveyards, Victorian mansions and gothic asylums, all illustrating the kind of dark world that makes a Batman story. Perfect. The genius of The Long Halloween is the fact that it's an important period of time in the Batman history. It's not one of those stories that you read and forget about, it's something that stays with you and allows us to better understand the Batman mythology, because it is an essential piece in the Batman narrative. And after all is said and done, the true genius of The Long Halloween was Archie Goodwin an editor who could see the potential of a couple of new artists launching their careers and, thanks to his unrestrained vision, he created a perfect Batman story. Archie Goodwin passed away in 1998, only a few months after the story was done, and The Long Halloween is the last big project that he completed. And I think that, somehow, the soul of Archie Goodwin stayed with us in the pages of The Long Halloween. Whether you like it or not, The Long Halloween is one of those stories that you must read. And in case you're not into comic books but you still want to enjoy the story, well, the good news is that they made a very successful movie about the story that is even told in two parts, and it's called The Godfather.